What's poppin' internet? Welcome to another episode of the Synced Up Podcast, where we talk about news games and sandwich a little fun in between. I'm your host, not Timothy Durrell. I'm Michael Clare. You've probably seen me before or heard my voice. And joining me today is the man behind the camera, the mystery voice. You you know him, you love him. Jordan Lance. How you doing, Jordan? I'm doing all right, you know. Um, this, this is a day of firsts. It is. I've it never is. had to host the show before. Okay. Um, and you've never been on the show before. Well, my face has never been on the show Your face, before. yeah. And you've never been in the hot seat. I've never been on the camera, you know? Ever? I guess you, yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah. no, never. So this is a first for many. So if you're an audio listener and you've been wondering what Jordan looks like, now's the time. You're Come welcome. You'll get to see. And plus you get to, you, there's, a, there's a little, something different on the set. Um, if somebody can point it out in the comments or, or on Discord and let me know what it is, I'll give them a dollar. Um, but it's, it's something very specific. I don't think people will notice it. Uh, so today... We got some fun things to talk about, Jordan. Like what? On this week, uh, we're going to talk about Epic is buying up more companies. Shocker. A brand new Aliens game is coming out. Looks pretty cool. Okay. And finally, some new info on the unannounced Switch Pro. Um, but before we get to that, we got some housekeeping, of course, and you're a big proponent of this. Join our community Discord. It's popping in there. Spencer's always um, got something to say, some hot takes. <clears throat> uh, we've been doing a lot of league in there lately. We have. Uh, a lot of TCG talks been going on, and then there's always talking about movies, music, of course, video games, mm -hmm. or whatever else people want to talk about. So it's always a good place to share any of your passions. So if you're not in there, hop in there. There should be links to all this in the description. And if not, just message me and I'll, I'll figure it out. It's a good vibe. It is. It's I, a fantastic I love vibe. the Discord. It is fantastic. <laughs> and of course, we're on YouTube. So if you're on the audio version, you want to spice it up a little bit. Um, get an introduction to what we look like and what our magnificent set looks like. Mm. Join us on YouTube. Leave a like, comment, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, even if you listen to audio. And of course, if you're on YouTube and uh, you don't like our faces or you don't have YouTube red, you can't listen with your phone closed, head to the audio portion. We, uh, we're on all the podcasting services, I think. If we're not, let us know and we'll get it figured out. Um, new episodes go up in both of these feeds at 7 a.m. Central Time Zone Gang every week, um, usually. We, we break that rule every now and then, but should be up. Um, and, of course, you can write into the show at synceduppod at gmail.com with any questions, comments, or concern, concerns, and we will discuss them on the show. And you can do the same on the Discord, too. There's mm -hmm. a section in there where you can write in stuff, like uh, I think Lucas did this week. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll read it on the show, too. And, of course, follow us on Twitter at synceduppod. You can follow me at the Coast is Claire on Twitter. Jordan, do you have anything you want to share about that? or You know... The Twitter's still a work in progress. Okay. You know, uh, Toast ghosted me one time. Kind of set me back a little bit. Wow. But, ghosted uh, by Toast. Who would have thought? Uh, not me. Not me at I, all. I thought he was committed to his relationships. That's what I'm saying. But you know what? We'll get there. We're working on it. Okay. We'll, we'll reach an update on that, man. You got to get a popping on there. <laughs> I do. I do. I do. I'm behind. Until then, let's get into the news, Jordan. All, all right. right. So first up, we have this story from Nick Stat at The Verge about how Epic bought Mediatonic, famous for... Fall Guys. Okay. So Fortnite creator Epic Games is acquiring video game studio Metatonic, the maker of smash hit Fall Guys, for an undisclosed sum. Uh, the company is announced on Tuesday. The deal marks one of Epic's higher profile acquisitions of late, following its 2019 purchases of social video app House Party. I didn't even remember that. <laughs> and then Rocket League developer Psyonix, which is a pretty big one. Mm -hmm. According to the blog post and FAQs detailing the announcement, Fall Guys will remain available on Steam for the time being, and the developer is still bringing the game to both the Xbox and Nintendo Switch platforms. Epic and Mediatonic say there are no plans right now to make the game, which is currently $19.99 or $20, bucks, free to play, as Epic did with Rocket League. But we could see that coming. Epic later confirmed it plans to make the PC version of Fall Guys available on the Epic Game Store. This is a quote from um, Tonic Games here. At Tonic Games Group, we often say that everyone deserves a game that feels like it was made for them. With Epic, we feel like we have found a home that was made for us. They share our mission to build and support games that have a positive impact, empower others, and stand the test of time, and we couldn't be more excited to be joining forces with them," said Dave Bailey, CEO and co-founder of Tonic Games, in a statement. So, pretty big news. Mm -hmm. Fall Guys was one of the bigger games of 2020. I'm sure a lot of people have played it. Did you get to play it? I did play a couple games. Um, personally, for me, it didn't mm -hmm. hit for me. It's not yeah. my kind of game. Um, but I also think I say that because I lost every single one of them yeah. very quickly. I I also played probably about. A handful of games, maybe maybe like ten. Mm -hmm. I thought it was fun, very cute idea, mm -hmm. uh, very interesting because they 
they took the platformer and battle royale style and pushed it together and it was a really cool way to do it you know yeah i think it works and i definitely think the the game design itself like the characters they're very cute mm -hmm. they're very fun all the costumes are they're adorable yeah and you know and i think the something they did really well is they made the consequences of losing not feel so intense like mm -hmm. some battle royales do like a Fortnite, when you lose and you just got to watch everybody else yeah it's kind of whack mm -hmm. but if all guys i mean you die Cool, but you got a new costume. Just jump back in. It's yeah, cool. and then even then, if you fall off the map or something, right? You mm -hmm. you get to start from the beginning of the the map or mm -hmm. whatever the checkpoint is, and you can keep trying, you know. And uh, the games felt pretty quick enough. I, I thought it was a good game, and it's an interesting acquisition by Epic. Um, some things. Um, Fall Guys was made in a competing engine because uh, Epic is known for Unreal Engine, mm -hmm. the um, probably the most well-known one. Fantastic. And engine. I think Fall Guys was made in Unity, the competing engine. So that's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. I wonder if Mediatonic is going to be switching over to Unreal Engine for their future games, but that remains to be seen. Um, but interesting. We've seen a lot of big companies just buying up these smaller um, indie companies. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen a lot with Microsoft. We've seen it with uh, Sony, of course. Um I can't remember some of the other ones that just happened. It's kind uh, of interesting to see, like, especially for Epic, like the games that they're purchasing mm -hmm. are those niche type of games where yeah. people are like, like Rocket League, right? We've mm -hmm. all played Rocket League at least once. Yep. And like, if it either hits for you and you mm -hmm. love it or you never play it again. Mm -hmm. But like those people who do play it, they play it religiously all yeah. the time. And so like, them buying these games that are such focused on one group of people and getting them all into one place is mm -hmm. very good marketing, very good strategy. Because like, you know that now every other smaller game like this is like, oh, are we going to be the next ones to join Epic? Yep. Which is incredible, actually. I, yeah, I think they've made some good choices in what they made. Hopefully, you know, these acquisitions will pay off for them. Mm -hmm. We'll see in due time. But until then, we do have something coming down the pipeline, and that is a brand new Aliens game. It's mm. pretty exciting. This is from my, Ryan McCaffrey um, at IGN. Uh, Aliens Fireteam is a co-op PvE shooter coming to PC, PlayStation, and Xbox. Um... Aliens Fireteam, a Left 4 Dead-like three-player co-op PvE shooter, has been announced for release this summer. Um, developer Cold Iron Studios revealed that the project, which was teased back in 2018, will take place over a multi-mission story campaign seemingly similar in structure to Left 4 Dead or Back 4 Blood. Cold Iron co-founder Craig Zinkiewicz says, One of the goals of Aliens Fireteam is to fulfill the Cameron-esque fantasy we saw on screen in the 1986 classic Aliens. Fireteam is set in 2202, 23 years after the original Alien movie trilogy. At this point in the timeline, xenomorph outbreaks are rare, but the aliens are widely known about. The Colonial Protection Act of 2187 commissioned warships to patrol the universe and protect colonists from uh, xenomorph outbreaks. You play a new so soldier aboard the USS Endeavor, and you end up orbiting Katanga after a distress call. There are over 20 total enemy types, including 11 unique types of xenomorphs ranging from facehuggers to Praetorians and synthetics will also be on your list of fo foes. Each campaign has new enemies to fight, one of them being a Xenomorph Hive. Players, meanwhile, can choose one of the five unique classes, Gunner, Demolisher, Technician, Doc, and Recon, um, and you'll be able to customize your Colonial Marine with unlockable cosmetics. Challenge cards are optional mutators that alter gameplay in order to encourage replayability. Um, one card might require headshots in order to do any damage. Meanwhile, higher difficulty levels introduce things like friendly fire, um, deadlier acid spray from Xenomorphs, and scarcer resources reminds me a lot of skulls mm -hmm. from halo. halo this is exactly what it sounds like this sounds really cool i think this would be a cool game for like you me and tim i think i'm all, in for this so i'll get on the couch and play uh did you play the last aliens game i it did not actually um that one was scary i've always liked the alien movies mm -hmm. uh maybe not enough to be like you know say that i'm a huge fan yeah but um that concept is always cool i've always mm -hmm. liked the alien versus predator stuff like i've always been a fan of that franchise mm -hmm. and i've like i mean i think it's safe to say i'm a very much co-op pve kind of person mm -hmm. i love playing games with friends i love playing games together so for this sounds amazing yeah it's i'm exciting. fully in for this i think the xenomorph is such a cool uh i guess villain mm -hmm. or whatever it, it's just such a, a scary monster especially um if you played alien isolation i think is what it was mm -hmm. um the there's a good aura to the uh aliens game that is just scary to itself mm -hmm. so you take that property mix it with the left for dead back for blood style of gameplay i think mm -hmm. you're gonna have a great experience here this also almost kind of seems like they're pulling in like you said the skulls from halo concept uh -huh. um it also kind of feels like they're getting some mass effect style um mechanics in there as well mm -hmm. um you know with the different classes the different um ways of playing the, the the characters the campaign yeah i'm excited i i it's interesting to see because aliens 
as far as I remember, you never encounter a whole bunch of them at once, mm-hmm. a whole bunch of xenomorphs at once. So if they make it Left for Dead style, how do they balance, you know, at least what I'm used to where there's only a couple of xenomorphs at a time. Right? Yeah. Um, if Which has always been a theme in those movies where, like, you know, like a few of them you can handle. But yeah. when they swarm you, that's how they win. So I'm like playing a yeah. game so like that. So it's going to be I'm interesting. Like, mm. um, I'm excited for this. Uh, there you. is some a um, some videos, some photos you can look at online on IGN, on YouTube. Uh, definitely do that if you are interested. But until then, here's something we can look and talk about. Okay. The new Nintendo Switch with larger screen, 4K output, reportedly in the works. And this is by Adam Bankhurst at IGN. Nintendo is allegedly set to reveal a new model of the Nintendo Switch with a bigger Samsung OLED display later this year that will be able to output 4K ultra high uh, definition graphics when in dock mode. As reported by Bloomberg, Nintendo is planning to unveil this new model in hopes that the larger touchscreen can prop up demand in time for the holidays. <laughs> Samsung Display co- uh, Company, I guess, or corporation, will start mass production of the 7 inch 720p resolution OLED panels as early as June 2021, with an initial monthly target of under a million units. These displays would then be set to assemblers in July. That's crazy, a month to turn those out? That's fast. Um, For reference, the current Nintendo Switch model features a 6.2-inch, 720p resolution screen. This new screen would look as if you extended the current Switch screen that replaced most of the black bezel around it. The OLED panel will consume less battery, offer higher contrast, and possibly faster response time when compared to the Switch's current liquid crystal display, said Yoshio Tamura, co-founder of Display Consultancy DSCC. The report also claims that Nintendo has decided to go with rigid OLED panels for this new model, a cheaper but less flexible alternative to the type commonly used for high-end smartphones. So that's exciting. It is cool. It's very Um, cool, actually. Being able to have... 4k on a dock switch sounds really exciting to me i know a lot of people are up in arms about it being a 720p resolution mm-hmm. but that's almost i think what your phone is mm-hmm. um because when you hold the switch as close as you do you don't need it to be much bigger than that yeah of course. Um, some people were explaining it. if you're interested in knowing more about that probably should have done some studying beforehand but there's a lot of good conversation about it and explanation for why it's okay that the screen is only 720p you know mm-hmm. of course we always want things to be bigger and better but for the price range they're trying to hit, they don't need that. So, um, and then of course the screen is bigger. So, I mean, you've seen the Switch. You yeah. got a lot of black. There's a lot space of empty space. It, um, right. Which you know, phones have gotten away from doing that, mm-hmm. leaving black space. Like I don't think. Let me. I'm gonna look at my phone. I'm gonna look at mine as well. Considering my screen is freshly. Yeah, fixed. you should be able to see most of my phone. Nearly the whole thing is all usable space. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they can really see it on there, but it used to be phones had so much black space around it, right? And now, uh, the Switch had that problem. They're going to go away with that, too. Um, so, that's super cool. I'm so excited. That's a very a cool, Switch like, style of upgrade. Whereas, like, you know, they took a system that obviously is dominating the market still. Oh, People sure. are, that don't even game are talking about Switches. It's a perfect in-between, you know? Mm-hmm. And so, now, I like that they've decided to hunker down and just improve what they already have. Instead yeah. of doing a thing I think Nintendo does a lot where they kind of just throw a ton of different stuff at you all yeah, at once. until something hits yeah I, I like that they are focusing on making this as good as it can be yeah I, I, I'm really excited I think some interesting stuff here is that they're going to start assembling these in this year June July um, trying to hit holidays mm-hmm. we should hear about this pretty soon if it's going to still be released in 2021 I mean it's March already that's crazy that feels um, incredibly fast it does like, especially I don't I don't know if you do this this year because the switch they still can't even sell enough or put, you know, make enough of those. People, right. are, people are still trying to get their hands on the Switch. It's still mm-hmm. selling like crazy. I don't know if you need to release a Switch Pro right now. I think you could wait a whole another year. Granted, I want it now. Yeah, Let me yeah, clarify cool. that. Okay. I want the Switch Pro right now. But I think from a business point, you wait because people are going to keep buying it. Oh, for sure. Um, you know, people have bought Switch Lights. People have bought the Switch. Um, and especially if you just bought one right now and Christmas comes along, mm-hmm. I don't think people are going to be enticed to buy a Switch Pro right now. I agree. And I also think that, like, for me personally, if mm-hmm. I was going to, especially something that's like such an upgrade, if I was going to release this, I wait until there's a lull in sales, right? Yeah. Like, I wait until that, that, that line sort of bounces out. And then I'm like, hey, mm-hmm. we have this even better one. How about you get it now? You know? Yeah. Because I feel like they're kind of riding the plateau right now mm-hmm. of um, Switch sales right now because it, it, they're almost selling as fast as they can make them. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think you want to mess that up right now. So I, I, I think they wait. But I agree. We, you know, this remains to be seen. Hopefully we get some news on it soon. 
some official news from Nintendo. Mm -hmm. um, Cause this was all from the Samsung company. This was some individuals at the, um, the company who were, didn't want to be named, wanted mm -hmm. to share this information. So it's super cool that we now know about this. And of course, confirms the switch pro mm -hmm. um that's about it for the news there's some things that uh we didn't have on the dock that are i think are worth mentioning mm -hmm. uh mithra and pyra are out in the most recent dlc for smash bros we have two characters left in this fighter pass um hopefully you and i have some time to try them out this week uh, did you get to see any of the gameplay um i did i actually watched mm -hmm. some of it while i was at work um i didn't get to get deep into it because like i said i you know i was at work um but I did get to see, you know, the the switching, some of the ways that her different abilities based on which form she's in yeah. change. And I've always been a fan of characters like that, you know, like Pokemon Trainer. Right? Well, yeah, because it feels like you almost have two characters. Yeah, like I feel like um, you have to learn almost two different movesets. Yeah, it's like it's like you're getting twice as much value. You're really getting two DLC characters here. Granted, they're similar, mm -hmm. but they are different uh, enough, and especially with Pokemon Trainer. Christ, that's three characters in exactly. one. They're and completely different. I love it. And I think at least watching her gameplay like i'm excited like with sephiroth you know mm -hmm. for a lot of people that was groundbreaking you know yeah. but for me i was like he's a cool character i like him but that's not necessarily a character that i know you as want, well and, and i think you know speaking from what i know you mm -hmm. want a character that that's more fun um to play as and then necessarily a character you like right right and, and so I, I feel like she just looks like she has a much more fun character model exactly i um, think she looks fast she looks I mean, you can play as Pyra and hit really strong and powerful hits, mm -hmm. or you can switch to Mithra and be very quick and very um, responsive to your opponent. So I love it. Regardless, I'm excited. We'll probably play her later. Um, I think that was pretty much all the stuff I wanted to touch on for this week. Mm -hmm. um, but this segment of the show... What is it? Um, you don't know what it is? I don't know what it is. You've never heard of it. Well, this segment of the show is the, the segment where we talk about games that were released in this week, specifically the 7th from the 13th. And uh, you're never going to guess what we call it. Can I, can I try? Go for it. I got nothing. Nothing? Nothing well, at all. It is called This Week in Gaming. Whoa. And we're going to be starting off on March 7th. Let's do it. Which is today, Sunday for us. Monday uh, will be the 8th when you're listening. Mm -hmm. In 2013, we got Sonic Dash. A weird one to start with, <laughs> but I wanted to know if you had played this game. I have not. I'm going to be Do honest with you. Do you know what this game is? No. Okay. This was a mobile game. Um... That was like a tempo run. Okay. But for Sonic. Which makes perfect sense. And it just blew my mind that this game came out eight years ago. Okay. Um, so, I don't know. I'm sure Tim or somebody else, Noah, is giving me a peace sign, which means he's I know played he's Sonic played Dash. Um, it's just a classic. I have good memories of it. So, you're going to flame me for this. And I'm probably going to get flame for this in Discord. That's okay. I invite but your flame not, in the Discord. You're going to say you're not a Sonic fan? Or I will. No, I would never say that. Oh. But I will flame you back in the Discord. Just know that. Um... The last Sonic game that I played was probably Heroes. Well, well no, what was the one on the Wii? Sonic, uh, Sonic Riders. You no. Know, uh, the, the the Black Knight. Black Knight. Uh, the Secret the, of the Rings. The Rings. Yes. Okay, Something. I played that one, and then before that, it was Sonic Heroes on PlayStation Two. So, that's fair. It's been a I'm long not time. a huge Sonic fan either. I just kind of, yeah, I think if they came out with a new uh, 3D Sonic game, I'd probably play it. Mm -hmm. But I. It just wasn't my franchise growing up. You know, I was a Pokemon kid. I was a Nintendo kid. I was always more of a fan of the shows than the games. Yeah, hey, I agree. I enjoyed watching, what was it, Sonic XD? Yeah. So what was the one that was on, was that Sonic XD? On the Game Boy? The little movie cartridge? Oh, I have no idea. So I on, on the Game Boy Advance, I remember this distinctly because mm -hmm. I used to not be able to read things in the car, like when the car was moving, right? Yeah. So my mom found these like weird strain of Game Boy cartridges that were movies. Mm -hmm. And so since I couldn't play games because I couldn't read what was happening... I would watch movies on my Game Boy instead. Yeah. And I remember Sonic XD, I watched it, if that's what it was. I don't remember exactly what it is. I think it's it could have been like two episodes of the show or something. Yeah, it was like, I remember, it was fantastic. I feel like there was a SpongeBob one, right? Yeah, no, I absolutely. Like two episodes of SpongeBob. I, I can't remember. And it was but awesome. But they definitely made those. That was, And then eventually we got PSPs with movies on them. Which is ahead of its, ahead of its time. Really? It Incredible. was. Incredible. Um, in 2017, Near Automata, mm. a very popular game, a game I want to play that I still haven't played, but I know, uh, I think Chance. He's a big fan of this game. Mm -hmm. Tim's talked about playing it multiple times, I think. Um, I don't know. Have you, have you looked at the gameplay? Is this game you'd ever touched? Um, I, no, I, 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 I have not played it, but I've, I know people who have played it. Mm -hmm. um, this is one of those games that's a very big on the Discord scene. People talk about it all the time. Yeah. Um, obviously, because 2B is 12. 2B. We all know well, 2B. I, I, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I've never played it. Um, not really my style of game. Yeah. But I do think the art style and the narrative focus are 
very good. Yeah, I'm I'm very interested in trying this game. Mm-hmm. I think what near replicant is either come out soon or came out or mm. something like that. Um, so I I need to get into the near franchise soon. It I'm seems interested. like right up your alley. Like it seems like the type of game you. Would it definitely love. is, but you want to talk about something up your alley. Mm. Same day, 2017, March 7th, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands. That's crazy. Did this game? I don't remember this game having good reception. Did it? Um, well, I can tell you that it had a better reception than Breakpoint did by far. Oh, well, yeah, I guess um, we'll take that. So I actually remember playing this game for the first time um, back just after high school. Okay. Um, I was spending the summer or a couple of weeks with Tim mm-hmm. in his old parents' house, and I stayed up every night for two weeks straight playing this game, trying mm-hmm. to 100% it. Never pulled it off. So there, this game is incredibly long. Yeah. It's another game where it's like you have the main story, which is multiple different regions of sections of map that all have their mm-hmm. own characters, mini characters, mini boss. It's very big. Yeah. And then you have all the collectibles. You have all the data points. This game is massive. I am still working on completing the 100%. Um, it's been a project kind of like your Pokemon Pokedex. It's yeah. a project that I've doing, done over time. You slowly work on it every now and then. And I still love this game. Um, I think the graphics... Obviously, it's 2017. They could have used some work. Yeah. Um, the AI is not where it could have been. Um, but all in all, I love this game. This game fell on th- right through the cracks for me. I don't know. I, the Tom Clancy games have never been huge for me. I've played. I've played one that we're gonna talk about in a little bit. Okay. Um, but I don't know. It just wasn't my style. I'm not a big shooter kind of guy, anyways. And see, these games are right. So for me, um, I think we talked about this before. Mm-hmm. I love FPSs, but yeah. I also love third-person shooters. I love over-the-top yeah. shooters, like you know, Rogue Company. Is mm-hmm. per- I love it. So for me, I've always liked those tactical strategy-based games, especially when I control a team of AI. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, like Mass Effect, Wildlands, games like that. I love them. They were right up my alley. I play them all the time. Uh-huh. Um, so I've played the Tom Clancy games back on PlayStation 2, like the yeah, SOCOM, the, the Navy back. SEALs. Um, so watching those games evolve into what they are now. Now, obviously, Breakpoint was very disappointing. Yeah. Um, but Wildlands, I think, was a huge step in the right direction. And I hope that in the future they revisit this and do it better. I'd be so hyped for that. That would be exciting. Going on to the next day, March 8th, uh, in 2011, you got Dragon Age 2. Mm. I assume that's up your alley as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, um, first off, everyone knows me. Everyone mm-hmm. knows I'm a Bioware simp. Okay. Yes, I ha- sir. I hold no bars about that mm-hmm. dragon age big the entire franchise is in my top five favorite game franchises mm-hmm. of all time um dragon age 2 unfortunately is the lowest one of the series for me um but that's not to say it's not incredible yeah. i love this game um i love all these games and what, i think what's is dragon age 2 the same gameplay style as the rest of them um n- no so they actually all change which is okay. a lot for people to handle because like mm-hmm. every game feels different so like yeah. you've seen tim play inquisition Yes, which is more of a, it's right. more of a real time strategy. Mm-hmm. Um, Dragon Age Origins is more of a top down tactical, mm-hmm. um, and Dragon Age Two is somewhere in the middle. Okay, um, it has elements of like real time fighting, but then you can like kind of stop the fighting as a whole and position people. Yeah, um, but a lot of the characters in Dragon Age Two are also in Dragon Age Inquisition, so I mm-hmm. just like the connect there. Um, good, good franchises. I love like. it. I love it. Uh, moving on to twenty sixteen, you get the division. I did play this one. Okay. This is uh, the second game I played on this list. I'm sure you played it too, right? Uh, hours upon hours. Yes. Um, it I liked it for a little bit, but then I think I had the same problems with it that many people had where it felt like bosses were just um, sponges for bullets and mm-hmm. um, there's an artificial difficulty, just dodging grenades and mm. then con- constantly shooting. Um, it was good enough that they made a second one though. Yeah. Well, so Okay, so... I fully agree with you. I think the division, the first one, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, again, third person tactical shooter, right up my alley. Yes, sir. Um, but it feels like a simulator sometimes. Like it's just grinding, grinding, and grinding just yeah. to sit there for twenty minutes and shoot the same guy. Mm-hmm. Um, so it feels very unrewarding. Um, which I do, I do think they fixed that in the second one. But you still run into that issue where you're running around and you were kind of just well, we'll shooting. Maybe, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Hold up. <laughs> I could have swore I put it in. Hold up. Maybe maybe not. Maybe not. No. 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 Okay. Never mind. You tra- you're trying to Continue use some on. foresight on me right now? Continue on. I thought I, I thought the I thought the Vision 2 was in here too. No. 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 Never that mind. would be kind of insane to have those I thought I put released. it in here. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I fact checked it and it was wrong or something like that. Okay. That sounds about right. Continuing. 2019. Devil May Cry 5. Um, 
I put this on here just because I, I had a moment where I was like, I thought Dem- Devil May Cry 5 was like an old game. I did too. And people were getting excited because it got ported <laughs> or got remade or something. No, it straight up came out in 2019. That's nuts. Yeah, that's crazy. That's and nuts. Yeah, that's a franchise I think I'd like to visit. Uh, visit. Re- visit. <laughs> I'd like to visit um, Devil May Cry series and the Bayonetta series. Both seem very interesting and fun to me. I just haven't had time have to Have you never play played a single one? I have played uh, Devil May Cry 3. Okay. But I didn't like play it, play it. It was like, so I was at a friend's house type of thing. I, I don't remember the numbers. So obviously I don't remember the numbers The numbers are everywhere yeah. for me. Um, but there was one on PlayStation two that I played. I played it multiple times all the way through too young to understand what I was playing, to understand mm-hmm. the story. Yeah. But the fighting was dope. It yeah. Was that, super the cool. hack and slash combo um, stuff. One of the characters, her name's Lucia. That'll probably, if you know which game Lucia is from comment, help me out here. Let him know. Um, she was one of my OG waifus. I loved her. I still love her design. Wow. An OG waifu. But I couldn't say anything about the story. I couldn't either. <laughs> I'm glad we're on the same page. You know what I can tell you about? March 9th, 2003, Sonic Advanced 2. Tell me about this it. This was the Game Boy game. Um, I looked it up, saw the box art for the Game Boy game, and immediately realized I had this game in my collection. Okay. It was a lot of fun, and I think this is one of the only 2D Sonic games I had in my collection. Mm-hmm. But I definitely played it a whole lot. I'm um, just a fun 2D Sonic game. I know nothing about the Sonic scene. So this could be like a bottom tier Sonic game. <laughs> and I would have no idea. But I, I enjoyed it at the time. It, it helped me over. I think Sonic is weird as a franchise in the sense of like every game is weirdly similar but yet unique. Mm-hmm. So like you can jump in on any Sonic game yeah. and still know nothing. Yep. Because there's so much there. And like for such a long standing um, game series, mm-hmm. it's crazy to me that I don't know anything about it. I can tell you yeah. a couple characters, and that's I about know it. I know the characters. I know Eggman. Mm-hmm. Classic. But like, what's what's the lore here, right? Like, how, where did this start? Like, what? Tell me why about is the beginning. Egg, why is Eggman after Sonic uh, for his powers? Okay, but like, what are Sonic's powers? And what what always got me is that like obviously like I said I'm not a huge Sonic fan, so I don't know very much. But from what I've seen, why is Eggman like the only human? Mm-hmm. And why is everybody okay with all these talking superpowered animals? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then what? Are, what are the Chaos Emeralds? And where do they come from? What do they do? I have no idea. I have these, are, these are the problems I have with the Sonic <laughs> franchise. I know nothing about it. Ask me about Pokemon, I'll tell you every little thing, man. Oh, I'm, I know. I know all the lore. I know. Uh, moving on. Speaking of Sonic and Weird, 2008 <laughs> Super Smash Bros. Brawl released in NA. Mm-hmm. Um, this is, of course, a classic. We got Subspace Emissary in this, mm-hmm. where you unlock Sonic. At the very end of the game, as far as I can remember, he wasn't in any of the promotional material for the game. Mm-hmm. I don't think people knew he was in the game until they beat Subspace Emissary. Um, and I think that was because they didn't finish putting Sonic into the game until the very end. Mm-hmm. They uh, just covered it by being like, oh, you unlocked him. Yeah. Good job. So they, awesome. right before you fight the final final boss, you unlock Sonic. Kind of just like Sonic just shows up and they're like, hey. I'm going to help you. Let's fight. <laughs> and you. you're like, okay. Uh, Brawl, kind of the stepchild <laughs> of uh, of this smash scene, Oof. introduced a lot of bad mechanics and stuff, but it's st- still really awesome for the the subspace emissary. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you ever played that story mode. No, I actually it's really cool. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna get flame for this, and I know it. Um, I play Smash all the time. I play Smash with Mike mm-hmm. all the time. We have some good times. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm pretty sure I missed Brawl completely. I'm pretty sure. I mean, that's fine. I'm never going to fault somebody for just, like, missing a game. I'm pretty we sure were, I played we Melee were young. first. Yeah. We didn't get a chance to play every game. But this is a fun one. Um, it might not hold up now, but you literally got to play a story mode with cutscenes where you're unlocking all these characters. Mm. You know, Link and Yoshi are about to fight, like, Fox and Diddy, you know, something like that's, that. That's super like, Wait, cool. We're on the same team, you know? Watching, I think Smash is one of those games, like, because at its core, right, it's a fighting game, right? Mm-hmm. And so you have fighting games like Mortal Kombat where the story is actually pretty deep. Like there's a yeah. lot going on in Mortal Kombat, but watching the way that Smash has evolved over time, yeah. it's kind of incredible. It's interesting because it's how do you handle that kind of thing where you have so many characters from different universes and different mm-hmm. uh, IPs and stuff like that. Where like uh, Street Fighter, they, it's all their own characters. They can incorporate it however they want. They can write mm-hmm. their own stories. But Nintendo or, or Sakurai and his team can't make stories so they have to find interesting ways to get these characters to react mm-hmm. um together and and spend time together so it's really interesting that they were able to even do that at all you know that they got permission from all these companies to put their you know zero suit in a game with snake and you know have fun like that I'm so glad that they do i am too very cool 
March 10th, 1998, Yoshi's Story, a classic um, before my time. This was the year I was born. The, yeah, same. This was before that I was born. This game nuts. is older than me. That's nuts. Um, very fun game. Very, uh, you know, takes me back trying to think about it. Usually when I, we're making these docs, we, we double check the, the dates that these games came out. Mm-hmm. And so we get to see all the artwork. We get to see a bunch of other things when we're looking at these games. Makes me very nostalgic. In 2015... City Skyline, um, that was a big game for a little while. I'm sure people still play it, but that was a. Um, I think a lot of people have played Sim Cities before, mm-hmm. and this one kind of like took that and ran with it. Gave you the. I think it's probably the best City Sim um, to date. Mm-hmm. I think it's a really good game. And then in 2020, you get COD Warzone. Mm. This game is booing still. Booing still. still. I mean, it's it's only been a year, which is crazy to me. See. I would have thought this game came out in like 2019. It's it's wild to me because I'm a huge COD person, you know? Mm-hmm. I played COD my entire life. Yeah. Um, you mess with the Gulag though? I love the concept of the Gulag, mm-hmm. but Warzone as a whole, it, it just doesn't hit for me. And I it, that could be because I'm just very bad at it. That mm-hmm. is a meta, that is a style of play that I never mastered. Yeah. Um, but I think when Warzone came out, I was already kind of burnt out of the Battle Royales because I played, you know, I played Fortnite first on yeah. launch day. So season one, two, three, four, like I was already burnt by the time this came out. Mm-hmm. Um, I think it's kind of interesting that Apex was the one to pull me back into it. Yeah. Um, but as a whole, Warzone, I think, is an incredible step for them as a franchise. Yeah, I think they, they did well enough to make it different to where... Um you know, it had its own mechanics. Like, of course, the Gulag, a very interesting mechanic. Buying your teammates back into the game. Mm-hmm. Very cool. I love that. It's super yeah, cool. Yeah, I love that. There's a lot of cool mechanics that they did to separate themselves from a regular Battle Royale. Like, mm-hmm. what, what was the, um, what's the original one before Fortnite? Uh, uh, H1Z1? Uh, yes, but no. Um, oh, my gosh. Why am I forgetting it? I'll, we might come back to it. Okay. Um, damn. You I ever played H1Z1? No, I didn't, but I did watch gameplay of it. No, don't even try and look it up because it's the wrong thing. It's going to bring you so many uh, different PUBG, answers. PUBG. Oh, that was how so do we hard forget that? PUBG, pretty good. Yeah. And, and so I think this, you know, it's hard to make a shooter um, battle royale and try to make yourself different enough. And mm-hmm. like Apex did that with the, the, the classes and the, the abilities. The abilities. Um, and Warzone did it their way, but keeping it Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's interesting to see how each game is able to make their own battle royale. Oh. I really like seeing a trend take hold in a game, like mm-hmm. as a genre. Yeah. Um, because then you have all these big IPs who do come in and they put their own spin on it. And I think that just encourages more spins to be put on yeah. in the future. And I really love seeing the way the genres evolve mm-hmm. over time. Yeah. Like I, I've enjoyed watching the roguelite genre evolve till mm-hmm. we got Hades, mm-hmm. which is, I think is the, the top, the peak of what that genre can be. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I'm not sure if we've hit that with battle royales, but we've definitely gotten a lot of good ones from this whole series of them i'd be willing to see another one you know i'd be willing to see another one come i mean out. they can keep throwing them out I'll, I'll try them i'll try them at least on march 11th this is a pretty big day okay dark souls 2 2014 mm. um that one was for the boys mm-hmm. definitely not for me nope i hate that series yep <laughs> and it hates a strong word but i strongly dislike it no man i hate it I'll i've be honest tried with you. so many times man i don't have it, the patience yeah and it doesn't it's like i can play hard games right mm-hmm. but you gotta keep me in exactly and it just doesn't keep me in. It doesn't make me want to keep playing. Just playing it because it's hard doesn't do it for me. And see, I've watched, because, I mean, obviously this is for the boys. I know mm-hmm. Trey and Tim have put countless hours in this game. Yeah. I have watched Tim play this game mm-hmm. for countless hours. And even watching it, I'm never engaged. Yeah. Because, you know, for them, you know, every time they die, they can remember exactly where they were. They can go immediately back and yeah. just keep going. But for me, I'm like, I was lost seven turns ago. Mm-hmm. Like, I would have turned this game off by now. Yep. So I respect people who have the ability to grind this game. Yeah. You'll never catch me. Yeah, but it's torture for me. Yep. Couldn't be me. On the same day, a game I did play mm. and uh, enjoyed for a little while, Hearthstone. Rest in peace. This game really wasn't too bad. I the, love the, this game. There's a lot of good RNG um, elements to where, when I say really good, I mean, they they weren't bad. Because mm-hmm. a lot of times RNG elements in, in like card games and stuff like that can just suck. Because card games are already very RNG based, you gotta like you need to get the right cards. You need to get a bunch of other stuff, but they made it fun. They made the RNG fun in a lot of ways. I um, play. Me and Tim played a lot of this game. Yeah, um, I used to play even when Tim kind of slowed down. Mm-hmm. I still played it every day. Um, when I was a freshman in college, I played this game in every class mm-hmm. all the time. 
Um, it wasn't until recently because of, you know, certain Blizzard things mm. that I stopped playing it. But this game has taken a lot of my time, a lot of good hours, and I think I enjoyed every moment I thought of it. it w- I think it's a good card game experience. I think they did a pretty jo- good mm. job. Of course, it's still going today. Um, they, they got more updates still coming out for this game. Mm. Um, I think I ran a Pirates deck, looking back on it. I think that was my favorite deck to play. Um, I could see you as a pirate guy. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Um, but on the same day, so March 11, 2014 was a popping day. You also get Titanfall. Which blows my mind that <laughs> Dark Souls 2, Hearthstone, and Titanfall all came out on the same day. Because I would have thought Dark Souls 2 was further back. Mm-hmm. Hearthstone was like further up mm-hmm. or something. It just, the timeline here feels weird, man. For me, that is a lot of, no, not necessarily for me, of course. But mm-hmm. That is a lot of banger games. Oh, yeah. To be competing with each other at the same time. Yeah. And then the, the one that probably suffered the most from that, Titanfall. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess Dark Souls 2 didn't have great reception either. But Titanfall... Um, was honestly a really cool game. I enjoyed playing it. Mm-hmm. Uh, the concept they got, they is super the unique. <laughs> and then the, obviously we got Apex Legends out of mm-hmm. Titanfall um, from who makes it? Respawn? Yep. Yep. Also, for me, Titanfall and Titanfall 2, I, I played them. I tried them, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, weren't necessarily my style of play. Weren't my kind of fighting game. Or, well, I guess shooting Shooter. game would be a better. But they, the people who like these games mm-hmm. are ride or die. Like even yeah. to this day, people still talk about. TF2. Oh, I think Titanfall and, and Titanfall Two are extremely cool games. Mm-hmm. They they were fun to play. Um, I just enjoyed that game a lot, and I, I hopefully that franchise can come back sometime. Um, but that was a good one. Make so it, what a, what a make an day. Apex campaign, you know? Yeah, that'd be fantastic. That'd be, that'd be pretty cool. But I'd be, I'd good be luck with it. that. Yeah, right. Not gonna happen. <laughs> Twenty fifteen, a year later, Ori in the Blind Forest, um, a phenomenal indie game mm-hmm. uh, cast. Uh, yeah. No, uh, Metroidvania. Sorry, um, style game. Very Go- good. People gorgeous. love it. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous game. great soundtrack. If you haven't played it, go play it. And if you haven't played that one, five years later it came out the sequel, Ori and the Will of the Wisp. Just as good and as beautiful as the original. That is actually super cool to me that they released the game on five the same later. day. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. That's really cool. I always I forgot about it until I, I read that. Um, so that was super cool go play those games they're of course they're phenomenal yeah. and then in 2016 we got the reboot of the hitman franchise starting with of course the first hitman mm. um and we got hitman 3 what a month ago or a month and a half at this point yeah uh, seems like they did really solid with that series i haven't touched it just because i'm not a big hitman guy mm-hmm. um but it looks like they did really good uh moving on we got march 12th nothing you know there might be something for you <laughs> but not for me not that i want to talk about are you discriminating against games Oh, of course. Okay. Uh, you think I'm going to put... Uh, uh, I don't know. I'm not going to come up with a trash game right now. I, I, <laughs> might, say something, I, might, get, I might say something You're going to get flamed. you got to be careful. March 13th in 2007, God of War 2. Mm. A banger. A they're, phenomenal okay, They're classic. all bangers. They, uh, well, not all of the God whoa, of War games. Whoa, 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 whoa. Not all of them. Name one. <clears throat> what was the second one that came out on the PSP? Uh, okay. You, I don't remember. I know exactly what you're talking about. Because you fight against um, Hera in that. I think they're not all of them are good. Or I can I think I can say that with confidence. <laughs> I think Devil's Advocate here, all of the God of War games are good. Mm-hmm. That's a lie. But you might you might get flamed for that. I might get flamed <laughs> for saying that one of them's bad. Who knows? Um, but then in 2019, on March 13th, Baba is You, which is um, a indie puzzle game. Mm-hmm. Why, why are you pumped for that one, Kylie? I like watching it. Oh, she likes watching it. Um, I like watching it too. I haven't even played it, and watching Noah struggle to solve those puzzles has has been pretty fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I agree. We've talked about it when we talked about puzzle games. It's super challenging, super interesting ways to solve things. Mm-hmm. Really fun. If you haven't played it, you probably should. And that was this week in gaming. Pretty banger week, I think. Yeah, honestly, a really good week. And there's stuff, of course, that I cut and skipped mm-hmm. um, because there's too many games to talk about. And uh, you should go and look too. See if there's any of your favorite titles that we maybe missed. Comment them down. Let us know. Let us know. This was uh, a really good week diversity one. Like, there's a lot of different genres. Yeah, here. and I tried to pick stuff that pertained to you and me. Um, and Aww. there, there was a good amount of stuff. That's so cute. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I try and I try and make it friendly here. Um, Inclusive. Now, we have the game time. Oh no. Uh, the time of the game where we play the game uh, this time. Which would be 20 questions. Okay. Now, oh, no. we discussed before that you automatically assumed you would think of a character. But I think it's more fun if I think of a character. Because Tim struggled in this seat. I've struggled in this seat. 
Now it's your time to struggle. Okay. You know, this is fair because I have flamed both of you mm -hmm. because I have figured out characters before you guys have, or I yes. have not figured them out at all. And mm -hmm. I've still flamed you guys. So, you know, this is fair. And I think I'm ready for the challenge. Are you ready? No. <clears throat> Make yourself ready, sir. I'm ready. Do what you got to do. I'm ready whenever you're ready. I'm ready. Go for it. Is this character mm -hmm. a Sony exclusive? No. Okay. 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 Is this character a Nintendo character? Yes. Of course it is. Of course it is. Okay. Is this character in the Smash roster? On the roster? In the game. In the game? In the game. Any of the games. Yeah. Okay. That's too broad. That's too broad. Okay. You wouldn't have asked me if they were on the roster. If you oh, had would any I? Of these <laughs> no, oh, would I do? Don't do this. Okay. Okay. So what am I at? Three? Yeah. Three questions. Yes. Is this a playable character in Smash? Yes. Okay. 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 Were you going to... This doesn't got special. Were you going to say that like it's a character you can change into so they're not technically on the roster? Is that what you were going to hit me with? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> that would have been a sniper. I just like messing with you. you okay. Know? So it's a playable character. Yeah, it's a playable character. Okay. And when I say Smash Bros, so this means they are in Ultimate, yes? Well, everybody's in Ultimate, so. Okay. I mean, well, you know, that's uh, the one I have the most knowledge of. Yep. Um, okay. So it's a playable character. Is this character one of my mains? One of your mains? One of my mains. I'd say almost. So I play them a pretty decent amount, but not enough to classify a main? I think so. Okay. Okay. I would I would call it an almost main. An almost main. Okay. 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 So can't be Little Mac because we Little Mac gang out here. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Sure. Can't be Piranha Plant because that's the main, right? Sure. What do you mean, sure? Are oh. you asking me questions? I'll start counting these. No, 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 no. I'm, okay, I'm, okay. I'm using you to bounce. I'm bouncing. Okay. Yeah. So it can't be Piranha Plant. Could be low man. Could be corn. Ooh, could be corn. Could be corn. Could it be corn? It could be corn. Is that a question? No. Okay. Is this character a ranged character? I'm gonna say no. Okay. 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 That okay. Is six questions, Sarah. <laughs> so it's not ranged. Nope, not ranged. It's an almost main. Almost main. Hmm. It's really all you gotta know at this point. Yeah, but you, you're, you're working with the assumption that I know this the roster off the top of my head. Well, if it's an almost main, it's not right. I think you you could know it. I mean, I have an idea, but isn't this game over if I guess wrong? Yes, that's why you 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 use as many questions as you can. Yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, is this character a female? No. Okay. Okay. Damn. Not a female. I was really I was really think I was really hoping it was gonna be Zelda. I was really hoping. Yeah. No. But I think I would classify her as a main these days. Not Zelda, sir. Okay, okay. So it's not a fe it's not a female, so it's a male. Well, maybe not. Is this yep, character no. male? Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I'd assume so. Got to specify, you know, because some of them don't really count as either one. So. Yeah. It's an almost main. Not a female. It's a male, not ranged. Mm. Male and not ranged. Is this character humanoid? No. Is this character purple? Is this character purple? Is this character purple? No. <laughs> Who, who's purple? Ridley's purple. Oh, yeah. Ridley is purple. And I would classify you know, him as a not ranged, almost main. You know, when Ridley stands up, he kind of looks humanoid. Yeah, but he's a dragon. Ah, uh, yeah. But he almost looks more... Well, no. He definitely looks more dragon than human. But when he does the taunt where he like... When he stands all the way up, yeah. He totally, totally starts to look like a human. I didn't think you would finesse me like that. I'd be like, no. well, there could be an argument. That's, no, a, that's some Tim stuff right there. I think that was question nine. Okay. Still, still got some questions here. You right got now. plenty. You <clears throat> should get this. I'm trying to remember the roster right now. It's, yeah, it's, it's tough. It's escaping me. I, I wanted to give you the Smash roster problem <laughs> immediately. Because that, that's what, the classic. I flamed you guys for this. I'm like, you can't remember until you yeah. get here and you can't remember. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. I had to put you in the seat, bro. Mm hmm. Okay, so it can't be Zelda. It can't be Ridley. It can't be Ron Plant. It can't be Corrin. Well, is Corrin default a male or is it default a female? Because I've never played those games. I don't know. I couldn't remember. Because you can play as both. There's a male and female Corrin. Yeah, yeah. Obviously, female Corrin gang. If you duh. said this character is female, I wouldn't have said no. Okay, okay. So. But I'm going to assume that's not Corrin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some good questions. Thank you. 
<laughs> you still got to narrow it down. Come on, bro. I know, I know, I know, I know. You can do it. I believe. I'm trying to think of everyone that I play. And the only one, that, the one I played the most recently has been Zelda. Maybe, maybe stop thinking about who you play and just think about the roster. Break it down. That's even harder. Try and solidify. Is people. this character a heavy? Yes. Okay. That's question number ten, I think. What heavies do I play? Now you just gotta think of all the heavies. Is this character a Mario character? Yes. Is it Bowser? Yes, it is Bowser. There you go. Twelve questions. Um, wait, am I correct in assuming Bowser is an almost main? Yeah, yeah, he used to be um, in Smash Four. He definitely was my main. Mm -hmm. um, I played him all the time. I loved him. Um, I think I still enjoy playing him, but I've definitely noticed that my win ratio has gone down a lot as him. He, I equate him, your Bowser, to my Mario. Mm. It was phenomenal in Smash Four, but it just it just doesn't. It fell off. Doesn't feel as good in the current game. But that four there though. Whew. Congratulations, you made it through the twenty questions gauntlet. You Thank suffered you, through the Smash roster. Um, imposing trying to remember it all that that, that is the it's hardest tough. part that's the hardest part it's super tough okay on to probably my favorite segment of the show reader mail you can get your questions read as well on the show mm -hmm. by sending <clears throat> oh yeah whoa <laughs> yikes oh we take those you can get your questions read as well on the show by sending an email into syncedupppod at gmail.com thank you oh my or, god that was tough or get in the discord Put in social suggestions so we can read it, flame me for it, and then talk about it on Just the show. Just like Lucas did, but I saved Lucas for last. I love this Because he's special. So, starting up, you know me love Spencer Truett. Trash can Truett. Interesting um, entry to this one. Hello, <laughs> Earthlings. <laughs> it feels like I'm being talked down to when he says that. Like, just, hello, Earthlings. Like, he sits above me. How you dare know, he? It's one of those things where Spencer definitely has the energy of, like, a 35-year-old man. Oh, very much. But he's not. I don't know if we've talked about it on the pod, have we? I don't think so. Spencer, you, we all thought you were 35, dude. I told him this while playing League. I yeah. remember I remember me and Noah, actually, were arguing about this. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Noah, how old do you think Spencer is? And he's like, oh, he's like 35. And I was like, I bet you he's like 28. And then we talked about it in League, and he was like, you guys thought I was 35? <laughs> and I was like, you didn't? <laughs> like, yeah. how could you not? Some of the stuff you say is just boomer energy. Hello, Earthlings, he says. <laughs> This week I have written into the show because I want to experience more human lingo. Do you ever say anything that only makes sense in the gaming community outside of the gaming community? At work I sometimes say pog, but only a handful of my coworkers just understand what it means. Do you have any specific phrases that you like? The end is nigh, Spencer. Okay, first off, I'm going to shout you out for that because I know that the end is nigh quote comes from Mass Effect 2 from an NPC. So good one on that one. What um, if that's not at all what it's coming from? He's going to say that it is. Just to feel good? No, I, I'll put money on that. That that is what that quote is from. Uh, I'm I'm guessing he's going more for like an aliens. Well, they are taking aliens. over. I guess that's fair. fair. I guess it's true. But I was thinking more of like War of the Worlds type shit. Okay. Okay. Um, but to answer the question, I do be saying pog a lot. I uh, poggers. <laughs> you said it pog ironically champ. in the group chat today, and I was yeah. like, Mike, please. Yeah, I do say pog a lot, <laughs> but not like. Most of the time, it's kind of ironic, but I don't think I use it outside of like the friend group of the house. I'm trying to think of some other ones. I unironically say we take those a lot. Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of phrases that came from playing multiplayer games that mm -hmm. we just say commonly now. GG. Yeah, I say GG People sometimes. say GG all the time. And I think that's a normal slang now, too. Even mm -hmm. People who don't play games say GG. But outside of a gaming, like like at work, you know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. work with people who are not gamers at all. Yeah. And I'll, like someone will like, Drop something and catch it. I'll be like, ah, oh, GGs. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what? What does that mean? And I'm like, oh, yeah, you're right. My yeah, bad. you're right. <laughs> you wouldn't know that. Nope. Um, what are some other ones? Hmm. What's one you like to say a lot? Me? Do you say feels bad? Uh, feels bad, man. Yeah. Yeah. I feel um, like you say feels bad, man, a lot. I say Pepe hands a lot, and nobody else ever knows what it means. It took but me I a long time to know what that meant, actually, because yeah. I'm not a Twitch guy. So I didn't know what that meant until I got deep it's into the like, Discord scene. Man, Pepe hands. Pepe hands. Um, um, ooh, God. that's simultaneous. Um, might have to isolate that, put it on repeat, we're make a meditation on it. Synced up. Um, Damn, we did it again. We have a lot of quotes. I, I don't know. I can't think of any crazy ones. It would have to be sayings like GG. Hmm. Um, we take those. I say we that. We take those. That's, that's probably my most uh, common one. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine we say too much else because, um, you know, I, I, there are, you switch personalities depending on what you're doing. Yep. Um, I'm not the same guy when I'm at work. Nope. Compared to when I'm playing on the computer or when I'm on the set, you know, it, it's, 
you know, you usually turn that stuff off. Maybe not everybody, but it's also, I know I do. That's a hard question for us because as a friend group, we have so much lingo, mm-hmm. so many quotes. Like sometimes I, I wonder if someone were to listen to our, like say me and you have a conversation. Yeah. If someone were to listen to our conversation, if they would understand half of it. Because probably not. No. Oh, well, especially if you were to do like a case study, right? Mm-hmm. And you come into our house and you just stay there um, in the in the middle of the day. And mm-hmm. we're all in our rooms, right? Or Tim's on the couch. Tim will make a noise. I'll make a noise back. And people will just say random stuff like quoting vines and TikToks and stuff like that. And we can communicate like that. Yeah. Like fully. Mm-hmm. And I think it's kind of nuts. Mm-hmm. Especially because like we just be making random sounds. Oh, yeah. Like, you'll walk in the door. And you'll make a random sound and someone in the house is going to return it. Yeah. It's like an acknowledgement. But it's str- it's almost scary sometimes how we can talk in just Vine quotes mm. and have a full conversation. It is crazy. I love it though. But for, for your, I think my personal pick would be Pepe Hands. <laughs> I think Jordan gets it. I don't think anybody else I know would understand if I just hit him with a Pepe Hands. Because I could totally see myself being someone saying, bro, I had a terrible day. And I'd be like, oh man, Pepe Hands. And they'd just be like, what? I only know what who Pepe even me? is, really, because there was a meme on Discord mm-hmm. of Pepe. Pepe's? Yeah. Blurred out with his fist back like he's swinging. And <laughs> the, I, the, the motion blur yeah, one? Yeah. There's so many good Pepe I memes. love that meme. I love Pepe. And that meme introduced me to Pepe. So I had to learn all the rest because I was like, that's fucking The Pepe hilarious. memes are good. All right, we got another one from Spencer. What's popping? I'm going through and updating my GG catalog, and I realized that some franchises I have played a lot more than others. Mm-hmm. My question this week is, what do you think your most played gaming franchise is? For me, it's got to be Pokemon. I own about 90% of the mainline games to this day, and at least once a year, I go back and replay PMD. Keep up the phenomenal work. Spencer Trivago. M- much different energy from the last email. So, yeah. Um, good on you for becoming more human. This was like a... This was like a Friday, Spencer, mm. and this was like a like a Tuesday, Spencer. Yeah, this is uh you know three hours into work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Definitely, I agree. Pokemon. I read this and I was trying to think of some more interesting ones. Mm. I honestly think I put a whole lot of time into the Kingdom Hearts franchise. Mm. I've played it on PS2, Game Boy, PSP. Um, I didn't play three, and that's about it. I, I've missed a couple of the side games mm-hmm. but i've played a lot of kingdom hearts so i think that franchise is up there of course call of duty yep. is up there for me top three um, for sure smash uh mario uh all pretty much most of the nintendo franchises mm-hmm. but i think the one of the more interesting picks is kingdom hearts mm-hmm. um what about you um definitely i think i would be my instinct would be to say cod just because i've played almost every no look at that back i've played every cod even back yeah. on playstation 2 i played call of duty 2 mm-hmm. big red one before it was a multiplayer game um so i think that's a safe answer here i also think that like i said bioware i'm a bioware guy um it would i would be hard pressed to be able to choose which one i think is higher between mass effect and dragon age mm-hmm. i've played multiple playthroughs all the way through gotten every romance gotten every dialogue option like i've just about 100 percent of those games yeah multiple times which is a lot of time um but i think my interesting pick if we're throwing those out interesting pick. is probably uh elder scrolls Ooh. i have played eso as you know an a astronomical lot. amount that is true you i had to st- i had to take a break i had to stop myself because there was a, a period when we first moved into the house where i was playing six seven hours a day when when does the kick restart i've Are actually been thinking that about that it is it is coming back up um they've had some updates they've had some some trailers drop recently mm-hmm. they've had two expansions come out mm-hmm. since, um, you, since you last played yep uh, i so there was one that came out while i was ending my streak yeah. um and i i kind of do a thing where this is me finessing eso and i shouldn't do that but i wait until they either the expansions get cheap or they come out for free and mm-hmm. then i jump back in to yeah. catch up um so well, i think that's smart i'm thinking i'm thinking it's about time for another playthrough mm-hmm. i'm ready to get back in uh we got the new setup so you already know i'm gonna be comfy mm-hmm. um i'm actually been thinking about either streaming slash recording it uh we've been talking about that uh looking forward to recording stuff um so i think it starts pretty soon here okay so if you're interested in that play with me i support it Thank you, sir. on to our next question from uh fan favorite fielding dahmer the turtle he uh he makes the phenomenal quote game i love it this week he says what's up guys my questions this week is a hypothetical situation let's say someone was offering you one million dollars but you are only allowed to play one game for an entire year. Mm. Would you do it? And what game would you choose? He says he would absolutely do it and that he chooses Rocket League. Interesting choice. Very interesting choice. Because uh, we talked about it earlier. We're like, some people are just super into Rocket League. And that's the guy. Feeling is one of them. 
So it's Chance, I think. Chance Chance really enjoys it. I don't know if he would pick. Oh, definitely not. I don't think he would pick it. I think I would pick whatever the most recent Pokemon game is. Okay. Because there is a lot you can do in those games. Mm -hmm. And I could just shiny hunt forever Mm -hmm. until I have like a shiny living dex. And there's no way you can even do that in a year, I think. Mm -hmm. So that would probably be my choice. Okay. Definitely, definitely just whatever. Sword and shield. Let's go with that, right? What's your answer? It's hard. It's a it lot is of, pretty tough. I feel League. like I fall. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, I feel like I fall into this trap of my the way I consume games, where every game that I play, besides you know like the Apex, the multiplayer games, is so time consuming, right? Mm-hmm. Like I go for the full playthroughs of like Tomb Raider. I'm doing that right now, Wildlands, yeah. stuff like that. But if I had to choose one game, and I could only play that game for a year, hmm. it's tough. It is tough. I think I would have. To my immediate answer is I want to say Mass Effect or Dragon Age. I do. Mm-hmm. But I don't think I could accurately say that because I've done everything there is to do in those. Yeah. I'm going to do it again when Legendary comes out. Mm-hmm. But I've already done it. So I think I have to say ESO. Because ESO is one of those games where once I'm in, I'll forget how long I've been playing. Like, yeah. I'll play for hours. And they'll be like, hey, bro, it's like midnight. And I'm like, I started playing at one. You know, like, it's been hella long. So I think yeah. I'd have to say ESO. And there's just so much to do. So much different stuff. So much stuff I haven't done still. So I think I have to say ESO for sure. I can respect it. You keep it rolling as well, Fielding. What and lastly, Lucas, like I said earlier, wrote in on Discord and says, last week, which I think it was last week, mm-hmm. uh, Mike talked about some JRPGs he, would, he wouldn't he would recommend to people who aren't already fans. What would you recommend? Personally, I'd always tee up the first Nino Kuni, one I have missed and that I have wanted to go back to. I really want to play Nino Kuni. Um, but I tried to write down some of my suggestions and, and some ones we could talk about. Mm-hmm. Fire Emblem Three Houses is a very um, kind of interesting one to get into where mm-hmm. you get attached to your characters, your units you're controlling. There's more fun gameplay than just um, like battling and being strategic. Mm-hmm. So I think it's really fun, um, pretty accessible. Uh, the difficulty, you can make it to where your s- students like actually die in battle if they die, mm-hmm. or you can make it to where they don't. Um, and I didn't, and I had fun because, you know, there wasn't as much pressure. Um, but it was still a really good story and really fun. So I would recommend that. Mm-hmm. Persona 5, of course, I've talked about a bunch. Phenomenal game. Uh, I definitely recommend that. I think Pokemon, if you count it, obviously really good too. Mm. Kingdom Hearts, uh, not traditional JRPG, mm-hmm. but still a very fun series, a very easy series to get into as long as you're not too worried about the lore. Um, <laughs> I've heard the lore is uh, it's a lot. If you try to get into the lore, contact like Trey or Isaiah because they can explain it way better than I can. Sure. Um, I talked about Xenoblade not being a good entry point, but after thinking about it some more, it's just a phenomenal game. I and enjoyed watching you play it. It's really not that hard. I think you could play the first one pretty easily. I, mm-hmm. It might be a little more grindy and harder in some areas, but still really fun. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, Final Fantasy VII Remake. Um, a, I think a great game to play, even if you have or haven't played the original. Um, but if you're, you can't really, if you're not one of those people that like to go back and play old games, mm-hmm. definitely play the remake. It is phenomenal, very well made, in my opinion. And I think it's very easy to play too. So. Those are some of my answers. What about Fair you, enough. Jordan? What's your JRPG recommendation? I'm the wrong person to ask that. Oh, I know. That's why I asked. Um, so you probably can't consider this a JRPG, but if I had to choose any, um, I'll just say J game. Mm-hmm. Um, I would almost say Monster Hunter World. Uh, it's not it really an definitely RPG. Definitely a JRPG. Oh, well, then oh well, not Monster Hunter World. I was just thinking of the series in general. But yeah, but Monster Hunter yeah. World specifically. Yeah. But I'll if I had it. to choose one, that would be the one. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm playing through that right now. Um, first off, the character creation in that game is phenomenal. And I, I'm i a cinematic guy. Yeah. I love watching trailers. I love watching cinematics. But I love watching cinematics that showcase the character that I made. Because you know in some mm-hmm. cinematics where they only show the cinematic from your first person. So you never see yeah. your character. But ones where you do see your character, oh, it's great. Yeah. I love it. And so I think Monster Hunter World is fantastic to start. Because one, the mechanics are complicated but it walks you through it. Like, it'll yeah. teach you. And once you, like, get into the game, obviously, if you're really into that game, you're going to look things up. It's kind of like League. If you're going to yeah. play it, you're going to look stuff up, right? And so once you start looking things up, you start looking at builds, you start looking at uh, abilities, that game is so fun. Yeah, it's it pulls been, you in. Yeah, it does. And it's very, very unique in the way it storytells. Because mm-hmm. it's, a, it's a grinding game, you know? You're going yeah. to grind. But every grind feels organic. Yeah. Whenever you go out to grind for materials or certain things you need, 
you almost want to because you're like, oh man, when I get this done, I can go do this. I can go do yeah, this. I can do this. But it's so satisfying to get a complete set of, you know, a certain type of armor. It's fantastic because those monsters are hard. Yeah. But when you get one, especially when you capture one, you're just like, mm, you feel it. so accomplished. You feel professional. You're just like, yeah, I did that. Mm. I worked for that. It's, well, way, it's very rewarding. Monster Hunter Rise comes out soon, so maybe I'll try that out and see if I can get involved in that. Franchise. I think you. I think you would. As for someone who doesn't I play like games like that, I like a lot of games, so I'm sure I'd. Probably I think you would enjoy it, and it would be fun to play that game with friends. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I play it solo. Um, I have played it with friends. Um, I play it solo now. I play a lot of games solo now. Um, but I do think that could be a game that the household could get into together and be oh, very yeah. enjoyable. Hundred percent. So, uh, thank you to the guys that wrote in this week. Of course, we always appreciate it. And as usual, you can write into syncedupod at gmail.com mm-hmm. to be featured on the podcast or on Discord. Um, so thank you to the fellows that did that. Now for our last segment, it's the What You've Been Playing segment. Um, for me, it's a bit boring this week. I've just played a little more Persona 5 Strikers and really been into Pokemon TCG. So if you want to talk about that, uh, hit me up. There's a know. channel for that in the Discord. There is. Hop in the Discord. We'll talk about it. It's been very interesting. But Persona 5 Strikers, good game. An amazing sequel, mm-hmm. uh, quote. Uh, and I think if you played the first one, or if you played Persona 5, definitely go play Strikers. I think you'll enjoy it a lot. Fair. Um, I don't know if it'd be a fun game to jump into if you haven't played Persona 5. I don't think it would. Fair. So I won't recommend it if you haven't played Persona 5. That's it for me. What have you played, Jordan? Well, first off, that's a lie. Because you've definitely been playing League. Oh, well, yeah, but I've been playing League, like, for four weeks straight. <laughs> I brought it up once, and I'm not going to bring it up again. I that's mean, fair. That's I've just been fair. playing Earth. <laughs> it's not like I've improved at all. That's fair. That's fair. Well, me, um, I've also been playing League. I've slowed down a little bit. I recently, mm-hmm. you know, went back to work. Um, yeah. So I've slowed down a little bit. I'm still trying to get it in when I can. Uh, that game is very enjoyable in small doses. Um, I've been playing Monster Hunter World. I just said that a few minutes ago. Mm-hmm. Um, I like just started my playthrough a couple of days ago, and I try to play at least an hour or two before bed every night. It's a very good game to wind down to. Mm-hmm. Um, I feel like even in two hours, even if I don't progress storyline wise, I got some grinding in. I got a, yeah. I got a hunt in. I feel like I'm doing something every day. It makes me feel productive in my game. That's kind of what I did with Valhalla at some points, where I was like, I play for two hours, not do any story stuff, mm-hmm. but it felt like I got so much side stuff done mm-hmm. that it was such a good session. It's definitely one of those games where like completing things and like I'm not going for the hundred percent because I don't have the dedication. I'm not chance, but yeah, just getting things done in that feels like I did something with my time. Yeah. Um, I can respect that. I have been playing Apex. Uh, I've been playing Apex with Chance. He's mm-hmm. also in the Discord. And Isaiah. You guys have seen his face before. Dubs. Um, dubs only. That's okay. a complete lie. Um, but we do have some good dubs. We do have some good games. We've also played with Tanner. Tanner's been in there a couple of times. He's also in the Discord. Um, it's always just fun to play a game with the boys. Yeah. Um, it's always fun to win with the boys. Mm-hmm. And it's also fun to have that good group of people you play with that when even you lose, you're stopping fun. Yeah. Because there's some nights, well, you've, you've, you've heard me, we just get reamed. Over yeah. and over and over, but it's still fun. I love yeah, it. I and here's the deal. I'm the, I'm the. We'll talk about Lee a little bit. Okay. I I'm not a rager in any way. Mm-hmm. We could I could be zero and ten, and we could be losing terribly, and I'd still be having a good time. Yep. Some some people don't like aren't like that. They go zero and three, and they're like, screw you mean this game. They go zero and one, and we're forfeiting. Yeah. Um. No, no names. No names. No, no names. Um. But I, I think it's fun to have that kind of opposite energy where someone will want to rage and hit FF immediately, and I'll hit no. <laughs> just Because I'm having a good time, no I'm, matter how badly I'm losing. See, I'm in a good middle ground where I'm not really a rager. Mm. Um, I think sometimes I think out loud. But you'll call out people. Yeah, I will. Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll call yeah. you what I'm saying. Um, you're, you're a trash talker. I am. So not, very rarely do I let it actually progress to real trash talking. Most times it's in good faith or yeah. good spirit. But I am one of those people where, like, if something happens and I don't like it, I'll tell you I don't like it. Yeah. I'll be like, oh, that's whack. You know, yeah. that was trash. But it doesn't really affect me. I just mm. think out loud. And I do that even in conversations where I just think out loud. Um, so if you ever heard me rage on anything, just know I'm not actually mad. Um, and I'll keep playing. I play games where I'm getting mad, quote, unquote. Are you one of those people that hits the ping button a lot? No. I only, one, I'm just really bad at pinging. Okay. Uh, two, I try to only ping things I think are genuinely important. It's like okay. if I see something, if I see a bad play by a teammate or even by an enemy, mm-hmm. I'm not just going to ding, 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 ding. I'm not, I'm not yeah. that person. Um, especially in League, because we're talking about League right now. Especially in League, I am one of the more calm ones, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, because for me, I'm not good enough to be valid in me getting mad. I'm still learning. Oh, yeah. So like if someone kills me, I'm not like, well, that was stupid. Because yeah. I probably just played something wrong. Um, but there are times where that game is incredibly frustrating. Mm-hmm. 
Um, I'm not really a rager in Apex either. I'll have my moments. Like I said, I think I loud. So if I get completely and utterly wrecked, you might hear me use some colorful language for a moment. But just mm -hmm. know, I'm not actually upset. I love that game. Um, okay. What else have we been playing? What else have we been playing? Hmm. That might be it. It's only the past week. That is true. Oh, um, I have been playing Tomb Raider still. So I'm going for the 100% on that. Okay. And I'm going for the 100% in Wildlands. I respect it. The hustle is there. That's about it for us. Mm -hmm. Of course, all the usual stuff. Like, subscribe, leave a comment, interact with us. We love talking to you guys, and it has been phenomenal so far. It's been um, the Discord is incredible. And yeah, it's it is popping daily. Um, I definitely encourage people to join the Discord. It gets a little bit more. I think right now uh, I encourage that the most too. It is mm -hmm. a. I feel like there's no pressure to talk at all. Mm -hmm. But if you want to talk, there's plenty of people that will talk and have conversations with you. Mm -hmm. It's very so. engaging, very open, very free of a place. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said, it, so far, everyone in there is just vibing together. We have no issues. We have no real... Your opinions are free. I think yeah. that is the biggest thing that you it's can fun. say. It is. It's, it's a fantastic So time. join that. Uh, make sure you follow me in the podcast and follow Tim as well. He's not here today. Um, but mm -hmm. until next time... <laughs> Uh, that, that was uh, that was the show. This was Jordan. I was Mike, and uh, we'll catch you in the next one. Goodbye. <laughs> I've never had to say bye and do the kiss. Babe, you're just not gonna end the recording. Are we just gonna leave it like this? We just gonna vibe. What am I supposed to do? Oh, wait. Wait. What are you doing? What are you doing? This is. I don't trust. What are you doing? <laughs> we can't put that in though. And you know they didn't hear you. And it's still not done. We're still going. We're still going. We're still going. It's still it didn't end it. I'm not gonna edit this out. <laughs> it just has. To, this has I to don't stay. Have to edit it this out. has to stay. You have to edit it out. No, this is the. This is what they get for watching. Ladies now. and gentlemen, this is why I am behind the camera. Kylie's doing great until I don't. I don't have my trusted Jordan. And here's why I'm hurt. Right? I did the kiss. Right? I did the. And we've got that coming down perfectly. And the end. It didn't end. <laughs> Can I do what? some? Wait, don't end it now. Can I do some well, ASMR? Now, now I feel like we need a proper goodbye. But we, then we'd have to edit it back in. No, what? No, no, I'm not edit. You're gonna this leave is, all this. This is all in. Oh, I love this. This is chaos. Welcome to our house. Well, you're the one that didn't hit stop recording. <laughs> so now we're here. But I don't want to do that. Ladies and gentlemen, we're having some technical difficulties. We're having a lover's tiff. Um, I was Jordan, and I was Mike, and we hope you had a good show. Goodbye. <laughs>